Um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Wilnard Anderson. Um, nice that you're looking at my video right now. Actually, I'm just um, up in my bed. But either way, I'm kind of going on a rant right now. You can call it, but it's not really a rant. I just think it's just something needs to be said. And the topic of the day is, well, one of the topics of the day, because I'm probably going to upload a couple of videos. Um, but the topic standing right at this moment is the black man's burden. Or not even that, yeah, but basically the, the black man's burden. And black people's burden in general. Um, I already know what many of you guys are probably thinking. Oh, where is this about the head? He's he's probably a, a, a black guy who plays victim and, you know, all of that. But no, 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 I'm not here for all of that. It's really just really simple what I'm about to What's that what I'm about to say? I believe as a proud African American, um, we have too many whiners, complainers, and quote unquote victims or people who want to play the victim card or the race card all the time. And my race as a proud, and I'm a proud brother uh, myself. The thing is, we are lacking the tools or the mindset even to be successful. Um, we often play the race card, as I said previously, and which which is to you know alleviate, I guess, or even to even over exaggerate why we are in such a demise. Um, one thing that I hate is like major cases for prime example the George Zimmerman case um, I did want George Zimmerman to be found guilty I, I truly did initially um, I remember February of, of course last year when this a couple weeks after young Martin was murdered well, was killed by George Zimmerman, and it, of course how the media exercised and how they played down George Zimmerman. How could you not want justice for this young Martin boy? And just in, in the eyes of many of the public eyes, both black and white, but much more dramatically for the black community, was to have him convicted have him convicted of second-degree murder. Um, justice for many of us was not even if George Zimmerman was convicted of manslaughter. Um, what many people, many of my brothers and sisters do not know is that the case, the case itself was not even going to go public. The reason the reason why I then went to trial, literally do many people know, is is because of the the NAACP calling for justice for young Trayvon Martin. Of course you have Reverend Jackson, you know, walking holding up banners for this young boy, Revan Al Sharpton. So you have all of these big people with large commodities coming in, stressing how it would be very unjustice, or there would, there is no justice for this young boy. This child does not get taken to trial. So the governor of Florida had a very had a very audacious move. He, he made a very audacious move in which given it to the um, state attorney general. And she believed that there was enough evidence to convict Mr. Zimmerman of, you know, second degree murder. Um, he had ill will intent. He profiled, etc. Long story short, this case would not have gone on trial without those big names. There simply was not any 
evidence or any substantial evidence to convict Mr. George Zimmerman. Um, if I was on the jury that day, sadly, I, I must say that I too would have agreed and said not guilty. What people misunderstand is that just because George Zimmerman was found not guilty, it does not mean that he is innocent. There is nothing on that paper that says, or when the verdict was read, we the jury find George Zimmerman innocent. That would have been something in its right much more dramatic. But this is not the case. He was not found innocent. He was simply not found guilty. Also, the lack of... Uh, oh, the dogs are starting to bark about the piss now. But also, the lack of the knowledge of the justice system that many of us Americans have. I saw many people post on Facebook and Twitter like they need a retrial, etc. It's something called double jeopardy, people. Um, that's not going to happen. Literally, once, he, once the jury read their verdict and the judge gave out said, you know, you're free to go home, he could have yelled out right then, I took that nigger, yes I did, in cold blood and I got away with it. The worst thing that he would have had come to him is probably someone trying to kill him out on the street or, you know, civil civil lawsuits, which are in action now towards him. So that could have gone, of course, civil lawsuits, but anything else, I mean, about the case and the murder... I mean, is is gone. Just suppose that to Emmett Till, and you see how the two Caucasians got off. I mean, after committing, if anything, if you want to talk about anything, double jeopardy, that would have been the time to have gotten rid of it. But no, it's not going anywhere. And in our system, work is it perfect? No, but it is the best in the world. And going back to the black man's burden because of how I'm going to tie all this in, I'm just tired of seeing my black brothers and my black sisters. We need to come together and conform on a much higher level. There are too many of us brothers and sisters who think that the world is against us. Um, my grandmother and my grandfather on my, on my maternal side, they were born in a very, very deep country south, country of Mississippi. And early, early 40s, nearly in the 30s. But in 42 and 44, my grandfather and grandmother were, bo were born. And they have some really telling stories of how they had to move off the street. And they saw a little white boy walking in their same age. How they had to say sir to someone five, six years younger than them. They could have been 16. And talking to a little 10 year old white boy and have to say sir and look down to the ground and not look them in their face. I mean, they. They have so many extremities. They, they have so many stories to tell me. And it's something that I will never be able to fathom just because I'm a very, very late 20th century guy. I was born in 1995. And uh, my world really evolves around the 21st century and technology and integration and globalization, etc. Um, so the type of world they live on, I will, they lived in, I will never be able to, to fathom. Um, something that is very difficult for me to, you know, try to explain to my grandparents, though, is that the world is changing. Um, that is something they are very timid about trying to admit, um, but they are very slow saying, no, it's really not, it's a cover-up. Um, but, you know, that what comes with age and ignorance and not being able to see, um, the true change because their image of change, their image of freedom, their image of being um, black and a Negro is much different from my interpretation of, of those things just simply because they are generations older than me and they were born in a place I was not born at a time uh, at one of the most strifeful and critical times of civil rights movement and and. Um, like I said, my grandfather was born the year before Emmett Till was born. Emmett Till was born in 43. And um, he was telling me, and it happened in Mississippi, only less than a couple hours away. And he, 
he was explaining to me how when Emmett Till, Emmett Till was killed at age 14, so my grandfather was 15 at the age at the time, and um, he remembers it very well. My grandmother being 13 at the time, she remembers very well of um, how America was at the time and how shocking the verdict was and how shocking it really was not. Um, it was not a pretty place to be. My grandfather, um, he explained to me the the traumatities that he's faced and how he almost was killed by the older white guy several times. And how he wanted to go and set revenge and kill him before he tried to get him. But either way, long story short is that there is change. Um, we need to know that. We need to understand it um, as black people. Why do you think if we were to call a white person a cracker, they would just laugh. They would not care. There are a few of those who would. But overall, why they would not care is simply because they know at the end of the day, they will be the ones in power. They will be the ones in control of the money. They will be the ones in control of hiring and firing. After, this is just with anything. Um, when you have some type of reign of power, the higher you are, what lower people or people whom you believe you are superior to and whom you believe people are inferior to you, um, you have a sense of entitlement. And you may be thinking entitlement to what? Entitlement um, to ownership, clarification itself. You really will not, it really won't bother you what they say. You just be like, oh, you're real funny. You're fired. <laughs> Guess what? Guess whose family won't be eating next weekend? And that's really how it was for much of the uh, um, the history of America. What we need to do is live above it. We are going to hear profane words and think, do I, does that mean that it will all be exiled soon? No. Does it mean that we have to ignore it? Hell no. I mean, move even towards more and more and better um, equality and better civil rights, etc. But in doing so, you must also understand um, that you cannot play the victim card. If things are getting better, and I try to tell my stresses to my grandmother and, grandfa and grandfather, but like I said, they won't be able to fathom things the way that I do. Um, just like I probably won't with my grandkids because I'm born in a time that they were not. Um, so, it's all circumstantial. Only thing I can say is that there is change. And oftentimes, the younger people take after the older generation of African Americans and say, well, we're not seceding because of this, or we're not seceding because of that. Um, that is very poor judgment to use, just for the simple fact. You're giving yourself excuses for why you are not seceding. You try hard enough, no one can stop you. Go to the next employer. Go to the next route, the next people. Your own people can help build you up to success. I'm just tired of hearing my fellow brothers and sisters play the race or the victim card. Um, we have so much more quality now. Is it 100% leveled off? No. But damn it, it's leveled off enough for you to fight for what you want and to get it and obtain it. To understand some people who are born into situations what they cannot control um, and oftentimes they they're in a hindrance of a position where it takes them a long time to dig out of that hole. But there are many people, far too many of us brothers and sisters who have seceded against odds that even Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did not face. You know, and yet he still succeeds. So, at the end of the day, one second. Come in, I'm kind of recording a video. So, at the end of the day, the excuses must stop. The excuses must absolutely stop. And that's pretty much all I have to say in that regard, is the moment that we as a people, we as a black people, begin to recognize our worth. That will be the day that we ultimately 
in our own demise. We oftentimes blame the white folk, but the thing is, listen to our criminalizing music. Listen to the type of songs that we dance to, the type of people that we hang out with. Is it truly the white man that is holding us back? Like I said, I'm a proud African American. Um, I'm going to college this year. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. I'm leaving in two, just two weeks. And I have not had as much success in my life that I've had by playing the victim card. There are too many of us to continue to play victim. We are better than that. I know I'm better than that. If they are the people whom you believe are holding you back, then damn it, you know what you need to do. Live above it and show them that you are better than any obstacle that they put in front of you or any name that they call you. Any, any post, any postcard, any note, any letter, any history that they set in stone and writing that you were, you can show them that you are not exactly that. That you are not a statistic like they want you to be. The time now is this generation, my great generation, who will soon be running this world and within the next 20 years. My black brothers and sisters, we must in order to truly succeed, in order to really gain grasp of the world we as a people must no longer play the victim card. We are beautiful people. We are very intelligent people. Only thing, only people we have to convince now is ourselves. Because we know we are. And with that said, you guys have a blessed evening. The Black Man's Burden.